Hello YouTube and people of the interwebs. Welcome back to another video. Yeah, this is today's second video. It's a more like slower, long-form review of tonight's episode of Doctor Who, Once Upon Time. Yeah, it's episode 3 of series 13 of Doctor Who Flux, so we are at the halfway point of this six-week serial. Now, yeah, the, the fact that it's a six-week serial is sort of my first talking point on this because it's advertised as all like one big thing but each episode has its own individual adventures now one thing like i am going to jump in straight and say is a bit strange is the cliffhangers that they leave us with every week never directly directly sort of tie into the episode itself like week one they were all going to die by the flux then week two it is explained, but they just wake up and they're in the Crimea. This week, Yaz gets like the thing snapped and then we're instantly into a load of other different stuff. Now, I'm not saying that's a problem, but I don't know. I just wanted a more immediate resolution of, oh, what, what, what's, what's happening here sort of thing. Hopefully we're going to get that next week, though, because obviously the cliffhanger was the Weeping Angel coming in and doing that. But that's the first sort of uh, well, one of the only bad things that really springs to mind. The rest of it, from here on out, <laughs> will be relatively positive. Now, we'll start off talking about the characters. Jodie Whittaker's Doctor in this episode was wonderful. Like, when she has darker material to work with, in terms of, like, she's scared and angry about her past, when she's shouting at the Maury, like, no, let me back, I want to see more, it's really, really good stuff, as opposed to her more light and bubbly aspects, like the evil side to 13, it's not evil, but that, that side of 13 is really, really strong. Now, the Doctor, that there's two Doctors, I don't know why I'm holding up four fingers, two Doctors in this episode, we also finally, thank God, see the return of Joe Martin's Ruth Doctor, who is a very, very welcome presence in the episode, despite only being there for, like, tiny, tiny moments. Like, she doesn't even get a full scene, she just sort of crops up. But, yeah, I, I will admit, when I did see her on the TV, I was just like, yes, finally, she's back. Because, yeah, Joe Martin's interpretation of the Doctor has barely had any screen time, but I really, really like her, and I do hope to God that she's in the rest of the series, even if it just, like is for an episode or two. She deserves a lot more screen time than she's been given. So fingers crossed for Joe Martin's return. Now, we also got Dan, Yaz, and Vinda. Quite, like, a bit of sort of character exploration in this episode. One thing it did make me think of overall was that episode of Torchwood, where, like, before the Series 2 finale, they all go into this building, it gets blown up, and you get one of their backstories. It was like a much more complicated version of that, because... We got to see backstories for each character, which does flesh them out a bit. Like, Dan, although we didn't see him much in this episode, right at the start we did get all the info on um, how his family, like, no, sorry, his love life has completely gone gone down the pot, like, hasn't gone well. He's He was about to get married, then got stood up, and it sets up him and Di to, like, hopefully get married by the end of the series, or just get engaged, or I don't know, have a happy couple moment. We saw Vinda, who I will say we didn't get much of last week, but I'm glad we got a lot of Vinda content here, because he sort of, we, we found out why he was stationed in Outpost Rose, because he refused to sort of give in and like sell out he tried to sell out this guy because he was doing the wrong thing. I thought that was a really strong part of the episode, and very good characterization on Vinda's behalf. Like, he did the right thing, which, you know, that's always good. He's not a villainous person, and, you know, that's nice. We also got to see Vinda's home planet right at the end. I don't know if we're supposed to know what it is, because I might have missed it, but he hasn't mentioned the name of his home planet at all. And I was assuming in episode two, oh, he's purposefully not mentioned the name of his planet because he's from Gallifrey. But surely the Doctor would know if she'd just been to Gallifrey at the end of the episode. So I don't know, is there a reason they're keeping the name of his planet secret? Or have I just missed it? Maybe it was in this episode. Speaking of Vinda, though, we do have Vinda's love interest. I can't remember her name. But yeah, we didn't get too much character stuff from her. But what we did get, I really liked. Like, she had a really cool scene with the Cybermen, where I know people are going to complain about it on Twitter, but she single-handedly managed to take out a load of Cybermen with a pistol, 
And yeah, I, I liked her inclusion in the episode. I loved the fact that she was like trying to explore the world and she kept replaying that video of Vinda. I thought that was nicely done. And I don't care loads in terms of their relationship yet, but this is a really firm foundation to build characters that like we're going to care about later in the series. So yeah, we didn't get much of her, but what we did get, I, I have no problems with. And then Yaz is the only other main central character that I didn't really talk about. And yeah, she once again didn't get loads to do. What she did get given, she did really well with. And I think that sort of, that goes for the episode overall. Everyone did really, really well, like, in terms of the bits they were given. But there were so many things going on that there wasn't really time to flesh any of them out. And I know it is a serialised format, but last week we had a sort of a mini Sontaran war, and then that gets wrapped up in episode two. And then we have the thread of Swarm as you're still, like, going throughout the episode. Whereas this episode just threw so many ideas, it's going to need a rewatch for me to fully get my head round. Which, I, I don't know whether that will work for a general audience. Like, us Doctor Who fans are going to, yeah, we're going to have loads to unravel and unpick from this episode, which is great. But in terms of getting the general public on side, it might be a little tricky to follow because especially as there's so many things going on already like in episode one there was so much stuff going on episode two it did slow down a little bit which i appreciated episode three though it's just throwing everything back especially if they don't remember the whole timeless child stuff they're probably not going to have a clue who ruth is or what all that was but once again so i've just <laughs> remembered i loved the direction of that ruth scene because i loved how she kept looking in the reflection and there was ruth and I loved that they kept phasing in and out of the two Doctors. Ruth could have had a little bit more screen time there. But yeah, it is what it is. I loved Jodie's coat as well in terms of costume. The, the uniforms for like the Division people looked amazing. Like That was superb. Really liked that. Jodie's coat, I hope... I, she won't, but I hope she adopts that darker purple coat for the rest of the series. Because... It just, it suits her much better than the blue one. And I think it's much more doctory. Like, it, it goes alongside her performance being more, having more gravitas and having more of that darker side and that shouty, like, ah, let me know what's going on. In, in terms of character as well, we also got that old woman. Don't know her name. I don't think we're supposed to know her name. And we're not, we don't know who she is, what she's doing, where she is. But yeah, Chibnall does like just throwing random stuff directly at us. It was very good and it did intrigue me. And I did for a moment wonder, is she the woman from the end of time? The one that's supposedly the Doctor's mother, but she can't be because the Doctor would have recognised her if that was the case. But yeah, I, I don't know. There's just so much going on. It is a little bit like, I don't want to say overwhelming, but I don't know what to think because there's just so many strands. And I don't know whether... Maybe a little slower paced. Maybe if they had an extra episode, they'd be able to flesh it out more. But yeah, I, I like all of the individual ideas. There's just so much going on. I don't know really which parts to like grasp onto and theorise about or which parts to, yeah, properly wrap my head around. The stuff with the Weeping Angels, I think, is very interesting. And I'm just going to drop a little theory in here. Um, The Maury, like the Weeping Angels and the Maury are either like, sister species or the same species but like the weeping angels are the evil versions or the maury that have gone wrong something like that i mean i'm sure there's going to be theories about that sort of thing going around the internet after tonight's episode because obviously the angels were in that time stream also like speaking of the whole time streamy stuff i loved the classic sort of the classic Who imagery of these big Maury standing in the vortex and Jodie floating around looking at them like, I don't know what's going on. Like, oh, that, that was brilliant. Really, really appreciated that because Chibnall's Who kind of feels to me anyway like classic Who but made for the modern day, which I really appreciate because obviously I love the classic series. Like Gone are the days of the bombastic Murray Gold score, which don't get me wrong, I absolutely love. But I do love the sort of usually slower paced, like serialised format from the classic series, which Flux has been very reminiscent of. And yeah, speaking of like all the classic-y stuff, The Division. 
we still don't really know what's going on. And I am sort of, I'm not worried per se, but we've only got three episodes to wrap this up. How are we going to wrap this all up? Because I'm presuming next week's episode from the next time trailer and from the setup is going to be Weeping Angels and it's going to be a nice little romp with the Weeping Angels. And then we're going to go back into the main Flux plot. But once again, I don't know what the main Flux plot is. Like, what, what, are, what are we grasping for? Is it Swarm? Is it Azure? Is it the Passenger? Like, Passenger's inclusion was really cool. And I loved the concept of, like, you have all of these people inside a passenger because obviously the name passenger it makes sense and i loved that like there was that hologram of die that came out of it and that gives more character stuff for john bishop to work with where he's like no let me let me go and see her but obviously she can't and i do think there's something cool about like the just the presence of having passenger in the room without him saying anything or without him like punching people up he just stands there and it's really like classic Who, menacing. Yeah, really nicely included. I thought the old, because we have a new swarm and an old swarm in this episode, both of which I thought were quite good. I don't know which I prefer. Probably the newer one, but that might be because we've seen more screen time with him. I don't know if it's just me, but the makeup on swarm, I might have missed something in the plot, but the makeup on the main swarm that we were following from last week, his face looked different in the like at the end of the episode because obviously we had the early version of him with the Ruth Doctor but at the end of the episode the makeup looks slightly different I don't know if I missed something there because I'd say the same for Azure as well there was just something different slightly different about the makeup I might be waffling there but yeah I don't know if that's something I missed I'm trying to remember all the different plot strands as well we've got Carvanista briefly <laughs> briefly showing up and it basically I, we don't know if it was Carvanista because it could have just been another Lepari but yeah we saw the Ruth Doctor had a Lepari companion effectively she had probably I'm gonna guess that like Yaz and Vinda were either um either what's his name the guy from Fugitive of the Jadoon Lee Lee Clayton, I believe his name was, Ruth's husband in Fugitive of the Jadoon. Maybe he was one of the companions, maybe the other one was Gat. Something like that. I don't know. I mean, I do feel like the, the story needs a clearer goal, because we are here week three, so many plot threads, so many elements. As I say, they're all really good plot elements and plot threads, but I don't know what to sort of, what is the focus of Flux? I mean, the title says Flux, we still don't fully know what the flux is. And I know that's kind of the point, because I suppose maybe the focus now is supposed to be what, how did the Doctor cause the flux, or did someone cause the flux to annoy the Doctor, or to kill the Doctor, or to wipe the universe clean because of the Doctor? Because that old Professor Sprout woman, <laughs> she was saying it's the Doctor's fault, effectively. I don't know where this is all going. There's just so much to think about, and it almost worries me that, like, is the finale, is all the answer, are all the answers to these questions going to be really rushed? And are we even going to get answers to these questions? Because some of the stuff during the Moffat era, like, he'd throw loads of stuff there and he'd not answer it all. And, like, Chibnall doesn't have very long left to wrap up all of these strands. I mean, I do like the fact that it is experimental because it harkens back to classic Who, but it's also giving, like, a completely new perspective on it because we have, like, we have this different style of storytelling. As I said, it's like that Torchwood episode where they all get blown up in that house and you get all of their backstories. I thought that was a clever way of telling us about the characters, but then I feel like maybe we needed more. Maybe this episode could have been a bit longer. Like, give us an extra five minutes with each character in their traumatic past. Maybe something like that. I don't know. It just... I keep saying it, but there's so much. There's so much to grasp onto. I don't know which plot thread is the goal. Like, where is the series going? Because series one of Doctor Who, you have Bad Wolf. Like, I'm not saying you need a mystery box in this series, but the typical Doctor Who formula is, what's Bad Wolf? Oh, it's Rose. What's the timeless child? Oh, it's the Doctor. What's, like, what is Torchwood? Oh, it's this institution. What's Vote Saxon? Oh, it's the Master. Like, 
we don't have one of those to sort of grasp onto. And I'm not saying we necessarily need one, but I feel if you've got loads of little elements, it's going to be really difficult to tie them all together because you're either going to do lots of different stories which might feel a bit crammed, or I could be wrong and they will all come together beautifully and merge and be all happy and nice and whatnot. But yeah, tell me in the comments your theories, thoughts and ideas about what's going to happen in this series, because I genuinely don't know. Like, <laughs> as I say, I'm going to have to rewatch the episode to process everything. But my initial reaction, yeah, it it's pretty good. Like, not as good as episode one or two, but really, really solid on the whole. I loved the whole, like, visuals of the episode, apart from the CGI Daleks at the start. What was that? It looked like something out of a PS2. But apart from that, the ideas behind it, really solid ideas, really solid visuals, the temple, really cool, Vinda's home planet after it was destroyed, that looked pretty cool. I do just, I don't know, because there's so many questions, but I don't know what the questions are. Like, let me know in the comments what you think the main plot thread of the series is, and let me know your ratings out of 10. I'm going to give it a solid 7. 7 out of 10? Because it, it's good, and I like it a lot, but I think I'll probably enjoy it more on a rewatch when I have time to process a lot of it, because there's just so much going on. Like, I need to stop saying that. But... <laughs> Yeah, overall, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. Not as good as week 1 or week 2, but a really solid character-developing story. Really solid, like, flux and um, division-heavy story. I do hope we're going to see the Master again. Cybermasters, Gallifrey, all of that sort of stuff. Come on, please, 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 Chibnall. But, I don't know. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your ratings and theories in the comments down below. And goodbye.